The peace of the Lord be with you, and good evening. This is our devotion for Monday, February 19th, and our uh, gospel lesson for this, the second Sunday of Lent, this coming Sunday, the second Sunday in Lent, is Mark chapter 8, verses 27 through 38, and we're going to see, um, you know, Jesus really kind of making a, a, a direction toward the, the cross here in this um, in this gospel lesson, in, at least in a sense. So, um, as I as I have been doing, I'll be getting this out in the evening. Um, follow the early evening order, page 297 in the hymnal. And we'll go ahead and start. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ. And we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. All right. Mark chapter 8, beginning at verse 27, going through verse 38. And Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked the disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist. And others say, Elijah, and others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Christ. And he strictly charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. But Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And calling the crowd to him with the disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Let us pray. Blessed Lord Jesus Christ, you came into this world as that Son of Man who would suffer many things and be rejected and killed, but on the third day rise again. As we are inclined to, to desire uh, not that cross, but the glory of this world, we pray that you would be with us, that you would strengthen us uh, to endure the cross, that you would bless us to deny ourselves to take up that cross and follow you, that we would lose our lives here, that we would gain our lives in your eternal kingdom. For we know that it does not profit us to gain the whole world, but to forfeit our soul. So bless us in the midst of this life to, uh, to endure in it and to cling to you in all things, as you are that one who has who is the Christ, who has been sacrificed for our sins, that we would have life eternal in your resurrection, as you even live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, so, uh, sorry, as I often do, I, I, I'm going to speak of this sort of in, in three parts here. Um, and, and all of these really kind of fit with the uh, with, with the season, right, with with the, the timing here. So, so as you have this beginning in verse twenty seven, um, Jesus is with his disciples, as it says, the villages of Caesarea Philippi. Now, Caesarea Philippi uh, was also called um, now it's called ba Banyan. It's uh, it's Panias, if I recall. It was uh, when the Greeks had moved into that area. It was set up as a uh, as a temple to Pan to to uh, to the god Pan, and um, and it was because there was a cave there, and there was steam that come out of the cave. So they would they would throw offerings in this cave, and uh, including like cat, cattle and that sort of thing. And um, but but at the time of Christ, it was um, it was set up for for the tetrarch Philip, who was one of the sons of Herod the Great. And uh, if I remember that correctly, I believe he was one of the, yeah. And um, and so he he was ruling in that area, but he named it after Caesar then. So he calls it Caesarea Philippi, right? And because there's Caesarea Maritima, which is on the on the shore of, of the Mediterranean there. So so he he, he calls it Caesarea, and, um, and and he builds a temple to Caesar there as well. So you've got you've got sort of this this small pantheon there. So it makes sense that Jesus says, well, who do people say that I am? And uh, and and Peter says, well, you're the Christ. And and uh, 
Well, no, he says, who do people say that I am? He says, John the Baptist, Elijah, the, the, the prophets, you know, various various things. And he says, but who do you say that I am? And Peter says, the Christ. Now, in Matthew, he says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And so there's this sort of point made there that Christ is, you know, here, here, the, 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 the true God is uh, is the God of Israel, is Yahweh, and, and Jesus is his son. He is, so there's this uniqueness there. These other gods are false. They're, they're dead gods. They're not living. But Christ is the son of the living God. And um, you don't get that component here, but, but that's, that's a part of what goes into that. So there's that confession. But then he tells, then in the, the, third, the second part, he says, well, yeah, and so the son, Jesus says, yeah, and, and so the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after third day, three days rise. Now, of course, this is something that we just know, right? I mean, that's, that's what happens. He's, he, he's crucified on Good Friday and, and he's raised on Easter. And, of course, that fits part of what fits so well in the season. Uh, he, he is the Christ, as the Christ, and Christ means anointed, right? He is the anointed of God. Um, we saw that last Sunday with the baptism, right? There's an anointing in that baptism. Uh, you are the, you, you are my, my son, my beloved son, with whom I'm well pleased, that, that sort of thing. So there's is an anointing there, and the anointed one uh, is the suffering servant. That You see this, this theme in, in Isaiah over and over again, the suffering servant. And so he must suffer many things and be rejected, but that he would then on the third day rise again, right? And so now Peter speaks to this, and, and Peter's thinking like we would. He's saying, no, 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 that's not going to happen. You're, you're, our, you're our rabbi, you're our teacher. We'll make sure that doesn't happen, right? And, and, and Jesus says, no, that's not the way it goes. Get behind me, Satan. You're, you're like, in essence, you're tempting me for that to not happen. Because Jesus knows he has the power to make it not happen, but the problem is if he does that, then he falls prey to sin just like the first Adam did. See, Jesus is the second Adam. You see this, this imagery in, in Romans. Jesus is the second Adam, and uh, he's going to do it right. right? And, and so he says, you know, get behind me, Satan. You're setting your mind on the things of, not of God, but of man. And then the third part, and so then he starts to proclaim that if you want to follow him, then you deny yourself and take up your cross and do so. Right, and that's where this whole thing kind of comes together with Lent so well, because Lent is that season where we're we're looking to Christ as the one who is crucified, um, but we're looking at how we ought to pick up our crosses. Right, we look at the the disciplines, the way we ought to discipline our flesh, and uh, and, and restrain it, that we would um, that we would not lose our lives, but have that life, that eternal life in Christ. We would not forfeit. We would not gain this world to forfeit our eternal souls, but whether we would, we would crucify our lives in this world and gain eternal life. Now, of course, we know that that, that that isn't something we earn by our works, right? It's something that Christ has won for us. Um, but as we cling to the things of this world, we, we, must, we must crucify that sinful nature, right? To thinking about what Luther says about baptism, what does such baptizing with water indicate? It indicates that the old Adam in us should by daily Contrition and repentance, Lent being the season of repentance, right? By daily contrition and repentance, be drowned and die, that a new man may daily emerge and arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever, right? So that's, that's this, this picking up the cross daily, denying ourselves, picking up our cross daily, that we, would, um, that we would live in Christ, not being ashamed of him, that he would not be ashamed of us on the last day. And um, that's, that's our hope. And that's the hope that gives us the strength to, to crucify the, the things now. We know that the, the things that we give up now will have that much better eternally. And that's the, that's the joy of it. And the, and the greatest joy really is the eternity of having Christ himself. And that is our hope, that we live in the presence of our Lord forever and ever. Amen. All right, we continue with the uh, Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand, and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way, kindle our hearts, and awaken hope among us that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.